So this is a, an overall introduction to the coordinate plane, on how to plot points, what quadrants are, what a solution looks like, and uh, most importantly, a t-chart or a table of values. So it's a basic For those, we get two axes. The x-axis is horizontal, means left, right, how far do you go? Y-axis is vertical. And then we have four quadrants. <coughs> These aren't as useful right now. Uh, there are a few questions on them. Uh, this likely wouldn't be something I test you on, but it's something to see, to heard. Okay. Labeled with Roman numerals. Numerals going counterclockwise. This comes in a lot more later in mathematics when we're dealing, let's say, trigonometry or calculus, and the whole positive-negative thing um, becomes really important. So here's quadrant one, here's quadrant two, here's quadrant three, and here's quadrant four. We start in this quadrant because this is the one we're most often in in the real world, which is positive numbers. So x is positive, y is positive. That's why we start here with the first quadrant. A lot of things happen here where everything's possible. Okay? And then we travel around counterclockwise. <clears throat> okay, and a point often called an ordered pair. And it looks like XY. Okay, where this is a left-right value, and this is the up-down value. Okay, two things are really important. The order matters. Three five and five three are different locations, um, and this is I mean this whole topic is just outrageously useful in almost anything you do, right? If you're going into any sort of you know working for a city or a town, everything is done on a grid and everything is GPS locations and surveying and knowing exactly where borders of properties are. If you're doing any sort of, you know, making an iPad program, an iPhone program, they lay an XY chart over it, and it's not like you're dragging pictures around. Well, actually, you kind of are with like all these programs like Xcode and stuff. But everything's based on coordinates. Exactly what coordinate does the button start at? And it goes down to what coordinate, over to what coordinate, up to what coordinate. If you press your finger inside that coordinate, it registers as hitting the button. The whole way in which, 
an iPhone detects where your finger is, it's pretty cool. It's got essentially little wires going down like this, and each one has a number, right? And it goes all the way over. And then a sheet underneath that has wires going this way, and each one has a number. <clears throat> Call these ones the X and these ones the Y. And whenever you press your finger, it registers on certain wires with the numbers on the X and certain wires with the number on the Y, which are two different sheets laid on top of each other. And then it detects, oh, they're at the coordinate, 3, 7. And actually, your thumb is pretty big, so it registers as in multiple spots. But that's exactly how all of these things work, right? I mean, this is wildly, wildly useful. <clears throat> right. So, one other thing is positive x is right, um, negative is left. Positive y is up. Negative y is down. Okay. So let's practice uh, plotting a couple points and answering what quadrant they're in. All right, so starting out, problem like number two it says plot the point and name the quadrant it lies in. So, first one, five comma three. All right, so how would we plot five comma three? This point here is called the origin, because so many things originate from there, and it's zero, zero. All right, so how will we plot five comma three? Five over and then three over. But let's not use the word over, but yeah. horizontal. But which way? Exactly, positive side. Exactly, so positive side, so five to the right. And that's going to be a common mistake when we start talking about slope, which I think is 3.2, is people say, you know, up three over five, when it should be left, they go right or vice versa. So instead of using the word over, you can in your head say up five, right three, or left two. Okay. So anyways, this one, yeah, this is a positive five, this is a positive three, so we go over one, two, three, four, five, we go up one, two, three, and we're right here, this is five comma three, and then what quadrant is that in? One. Yeah, that's in quadrant one, so we put a big Roman numeral one. <laughs> okay, taking a point like, uh, let's go with six. Six is negative one comma negative three. Where would negative one, negative three be? So maybe I'll set there. Is that novella? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Where would negative one, negative three? Down. Remember, so we're starting with the x first, so x oh. is left or right, y is up or down. Totally okay. That way? Yeah, so left one. This is negative one, and then? And then negative three is three down. Exactly, so down one, two, three, down negative three. So here is your point at negative one, comma, negative three. And what quadrant would that be in? I know I raised the quadrant. Uh, third? Yeah, exactly. We start with positive, positive. And then we go counterclockwise, so one, two, three. And again, we say it with no Okay. Um, and then the problems after that are more of uh, placing points on a graph. And then after that, there's actually a picture of a graph with lots of points on it, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And it says identify the points. So you're going to get really comfortable with the idea of right and left and up and down with an x, y point. Okay. Now the next thing is a big idea. This is a really big idea. <clears throat> big idea is a 
What is the solution to, and this is number 38 here, is similar. It's not exactly what I'm asking. But 38 is y equals 4x. And this, what is the uh, solution to this equation look like? And this isn't something I'm going to write out and it's going to be uh, you know, explicitly necessarily written, but I just want to you know, talk about this. Okay. What does an equation, or what is the solution to this equation look like? So, I mean, what does it mean for something to be a solution? It has to change from chapter 2 to chapter 3. What does it mean for something to be a solution? Exactly. So give me an example. What can we plug in for x? What can we plug in for x? Oh, for x, I can put 5 and y is equal to 5. Exactly. So if we plug 5 in for x, then y would be 20. And so the way we could represent that is x comma y is equal to 5 comma 20. And that would be a solution because as you said, when we plug it in, it makes it true. Okay, so that hasn't changed. That's a big idea from chapter two to chapter whatever chapter, whatever future class we go to. A solution is something that when you plug it into the equation makes it true. When you have two variables, you have to plug in two different things, and that's why it looks like a point x comma y, and that's why we call it an ordered pair, because the order matters, right? We're saying x is equal to five, and y is equal to 20. You could write, x equals 5 and y equals 20, but it's much easier, much quicker to just say 5 comma 20, right? So that's why we have points, is to represent two variables, two different numbers, one for x, one for y, but it's still, when we plug it in, it makes it true, it's a solution. Now, how many solutions are there to this equation? Yeah, there's an infinite amount, right? I could have plugged in 5, or I could have plugged in 1. So here are some examples, right? If I plug in 0, what does y have to be? 0, right? If I plug in 0, 0 times 4 is 0. So if I plug in 0, 0, yeah, 0 is equal to 0. That's true. Okay, if I plug in 1 for x, what would y have to be for this to be a solution? Yeah, so it has to be 4, because 4 times 1 is 4. Plug in 2. 8, plug in 3, 12. yeah, so these are solutions, just examples of solutions, but for every solution there's tons of non-solutions, right? So here are not solutions, right? I could plug in 0 for x and get what, does, what out is y and have it not be a solution? Yeah, 1, right? If I plug this in, 1 equals 4 times 0, 1 equals 0, that's not true, not a solution. All right, Emily, give me another example of something that's not a solution. Um, two, and yeah, so plug in 2 and 9, 4 times 2 is 8, that's not equal to 9, not a solution. Right? In fact, I could pick 1, and any other number other than 4, and it's not a solution. I could pick 3, and any number other than 12, and it's not a solution. So, this is what I'll write. Right. A linear equation two variables this is a relationship or some people think of it as a restriction um, especially as you move forward in math
So what it does is finds the relationship between x and y together. So, for example, what I mean is, if I take a really simple equation like y equals 2x, okay, there are an infinite number of solutions If we know one value of x, we can find its partner y. And that's a big idea. So if we know the value of one variable, the relationship or the restriction means there is exactly, exactly one partner. I like to think of it kind of like true love. It's like four halves with this relationship. Only one partner out there out of all the numbers in the universe that has one true love partner. And you can find it. You're like the ultimate match.com, right? You can use the equation and say its partner is eight. Right? And I like seeing that relationship. Okay? And that's going to be a big part of what we do in this section, is you're going to set up a table with an equation and say, okay, plug in one for x. What is its partner value? If you plug in two for x, what's its partner value? And each of those is going to be a solution. And there's an infinite number of solutions. So, in example, or not in example, this example, let's set up some solutions. So here's how I would do it. I would, I would say, okay, um, here's a table, x and y. This is a table of values. What I'm going to call in this um, class an X oops, a T chart, because it looks like a T. Okay? This is going to be your most important tool going forward, because if you forget everything you know about graphing, if you forget everything you know about slope and Y intercept and everything, you can use this to graph every equation in the entire class. If I say graph, and I give you anything, you can use a t-chart to graph. I could give you some crazy thing that you have no idea how to graph, right? x to the third minus five. Right? You have no, there's no slope of that, it's a curve. You could use a t-chart and just plug in numbers. Plug in one for x, what's y? Plug in two for x, what's y? Plug in three for x, what's y? So this t-chart is the safety net under the trapeze. If you forget everything and are falling to your death, the t-chart saves me, okay? So, let's plug in some values. For y equals 2x, let's plug in x equals, and I like to choose easy values. So for me, I choose zero. That's my easiest number. And then the next easiest number is one. And then I'm gonna choose negative one. Next easiest number, two, I'm gonna choose negative. Yeah, you can choose whatever numbers you want. Obviously, you want to graph these, so you don't want to choose like 100, because it's harder to graph 100 than it is to graph 0. You can put things right around the origin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, for x equals 1, I'm going to plug it in. y equals 2 times, whoops, that was sloppy, 2 times 1. So that would be y equals 2. So when x equals 1, y is 2. Okay, when x equals 0, I'm going to go y equals 2 times 0, y equals 0. So I'm finding their partner value, okay? For x equals 1, whoops, negative 1 I meant, y equals 2 times negative 1, y is negative 2. For x equals 2 and x equals negative 2, Plugging them in, y equals 2 times 2 is 4, and y equals 2 times negative 2 is negative 1. Okay, so we can get as many solutions as you want. You have to have at least 2 to graph a line. I would always do at least 3 to double check, because if the 3 points you found don't make a line, you made a mistake. 
right? But four or five is much safer. That way, if your five points don't line up, you're sure you made a mistake somewhere. Yeah. Um, how did you get y equals two in the first place? Um, so I just plugged in these values of x into the equation, right? So I, yeah, so I chose easy values and I plugged, plug in your chosen values of x into the equation and find their partner values of y. big idea here is, okay, how do you represent an infinite group of solutions? I'm not going to make a list, because no matter how many things I list, there's an infinite number more. Right? So what we do instead is we take this graph, and this is so beautiful and elegant and simple. I mean, how do you represent an infinite number of solutions? Okay, so we're still doing this same example. As I draw an xy graph, and I say, okay, here's my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. Well, let's just put the points on here and see what happens. Okay, so we have the point, and you can think of this like this is negative 2, comma, 4. These are partners. These two values have nothing to do with these two. This is one solution by itself. This is one solution. This is one solution. This is one solution. And this is one solution. If I plug any one of those points in for x and y together, it will work out. So what I can do is go to negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, or 2, 4. And if I kept plugging in more and more numbers, what I would get is all these solutions You kept plugging them in, kept plugging them in, right? It's like one of those uh, dot pictures, you know, where the dots are so close, it starts to make like a face or a sunset, you know? And that's what's going on here. If you have so many solutions infinitely close together, and if you found every solution, there is no empty space in between, so we represent it with a line. Where the line is just a bunch of dots so close together, there's no space between them. And I can literally take my pen and say, this is not a solution. This is a solution. This is not a solution. This is a solution, right? So anything on the line, if I plug it in, right, I could take a point right here that's negative 3, negative 6, and I can say, well, let's plug it in, and let's see if that works. Well, here's y equals 2x. So for x, I'm going to plug in negative 3, and y, I'm going to plug in negative 6. So negative 6 equals 2 times negative 3. Negative 6 equals negative 6. Yes, it's a solution. It being a solution to the equation and it being on the line are synonymous. Okay? That's what a solution to the equation means. All right, so that's a big idea. I'll write it out. And that's a common problem you'll see on the homework, is it'll say, is this point on the line? And they don't mean graph the line and see if it goes to that point. They mean plug the point in and see if it's a solution. So asking you, is this point on the line, is the exact same as saying, is this point a solution to the equation? Okay, so I'll write that one more time. Synonymous, which means, means the same thing. or equivalent. All right. So 
So last thing we're going to do is just a couple examples of this. But that's it. And this is such a huge thing. Uh, this was a word problem on at least one or two um, tests I've given in the past. What is a solution to an equation like this? What does it mean to be a solution? What does it mean to be on the line? Questions like that. Okay, so here's an example. The instructions for these problems say, <clears throat> okay, select integers for x starting with negative 2 and ending with 2. So that would mean negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So they shouldn't have used the word select because they're selected for you. Um, and it's saying find at least five solutions in your table of values and then graph. Okay? So let's take one example. Uh, here's 62. Y equals 2x times y. So we're going to make a table of values and then we're going to graph. So here's my table of values x and y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And I'm going to plug those in and find each of their partner y values. So first I'm going to say y equals. 2x, whoops, and I'm going to plug in negative 2, minus 1. So I'm plugging in my first value, and I want to find negative 2's partner y value. So that's going to give me negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. So I now know negative 2's partner with this relationship, with this equation, is negative 5. And I do that over and over. As the chapter progresses, there will be more elegant ways to graph this, much quicker. But this is your safety net. This will always, always, always work on a test when you forget everything else. So it's a very good thing to know. Okay, so y equals 2 times, and I'll plug in my next value. y equals 2 times, I'll plug in my next value y equals 2 times, and I'll plug in my next value. So negative 1, 0, 1. That's negative 2 minus 2 is negative 3. 0 minus 1, negative 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. And lastly, you'll see, and this is the idea of what a linear equation is, is you see the same increment. You don't need to notice this, but you see the same increment. We're adding two each time. Adding two each time. Adding two. You don't need to see this right now. You're adding one each time. Adding one each time. Adding one each time. And again, you don't need to see this yet, but what this represents is going up and over the same amount, like a set of stairs always, forever, and the line connects. It's like laying a two by four over those, sta those stairs. It ends up being straight, a constant slope going on forever and ever in a straight line. Anyway, so let's graph these points. Okay, we made our table of values and we found some points. Our first point is negative two comma negative five, so we go back two, down one, two, three, four, five. Our second point is back one, down three. Where would zero need to be one? Yeah, left, right, zero, and then just down. And then, the, well, yeah, oh, I couldn't see it. That was, so one, one is over one, up one, and then two, three. So over two, one, two, so one, two, three. Right? And so there it is. Grab my trusty ruler right? and connect those and put a nice arrowhead on it. There we go. And that's my equation. Y equals 2x minus 1. Right? So I chose any values for x I wanted. Usually, 
those are the five easiest, so those are the five I always choose. And you can choose any one, you plug them in and find their one and only true love partner in this equation. And each one has its own partner, right? And there we go. And these are now points. Okay? And each one of these points you plot. And again, you only need two, but if you plot four and the fifth point is over here, then you go, ah, I probably made a little mistake there. And you go back and check and go, ah, oh, yeah, that point was actually supposed to be right here. So that's an easy way to double check. Whereas a, mis a couple mistakes I see, and then I'll let you guys start practicing this. A couple mistakes I see are uh, people choosing two points that are super close together and being like, yeah, that's enough, and just drawing their line. The problem with that is, if you're going to choose two points, choose two far away. Because if you continue this pattern, it would go this way. But points are big, and you can draw a line going from this side of the point to this side of the point, this side of the point to this side of the point. So there's a lot of margin for error when points are close together. Um, if you only choose two points, maybe you made a mistake on one, and so the line looks totally different than it should be. Right? So always I would do at least three points, and I would choose points that are far away from each other. I would use a ruler. I'm not really big on marking people down for not having arrowheads or being sloppy. However, if your line looks like this, I'm going to grade you down. Or what I do is I check, here are the points it should go through, and if your line looks like this, then I do grade you down because you missed the points that it should go to. But as long as you're close, it's okay. All right. So just be careful. I would use a ruler or the side of your calculator, the side of a book, the side of anything that is straight. You don't need to go spend money on a calculator. I mean, on a ruler, you can use any straight edge. Okay. But that's it. Um, I hope this is, you know, for the most part, a good review. Uh, maybe you heard it in a new perspective, which is what I hope to bring. Um, but yeah, so right now I would work on 